Welcome to Agadir, Morocco. Now, the three cities that I visited in Morocco, Marrakesh, Essaouira, and Agadir, Agadir was by far my favorite. Agadir would be equivalent to like Miami Beach in Florida. Now, a little bit more about Agadir. Agadir is located on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean and has a population of about 979,000 people. The average annual salary is about 23,000 US. Agadir is both a port town and a beach town and is also a cruise ship destination. In 2019, over 1.1 million tourists visited Agadir. Agadir is a very popular spot for Europe's rich and famous. Now this area that I'm walking in uh, is the marina, but also there's the port area, the industrial port area, there's shops, restaurants, and apartment homes. Right now I'm going to my Airbnb. So this is the Airbnb that I stayed in. This is actually the second Airbnb. Uh, the first Airbnb I actually refused to stay in because it was a scam. The guy tried to make me pay an extra $600 once I arrived. And he then lowered it to $150. I refused to pay either because I'd already paid through Airbnb. So I ended up leaving that Airbnb and coming to this one. And you can see this one is very, very nice. Um, this whole complex is real nice. It's right near the beach. It's right near the marina. Everything is in uh, walking distance, which is the way that I prefer a lot of times when I'm going on trips. You can see everything is like modern, up to date, a little car TV there. Um, even just the decor and the whole setup of it is like really, really nice. And I enjoyed it a lot. Now, the other Airbnb that I was actually going to stay in, like I said, he showed it three hours late. Security actually felt bad for me. And it was during Ramadan. So once Ramadan broke at 7 p.m., uh, they actually asked me if I wanted something to eat. And they fed me, which was very nice and generous of them. Eventually, the dude showed up and uh, he tried to say that he didn't book Airbnb. I showed him the sex messages that we exchanged and I showed him the confirmation. So then... He said he would take me to the apartment. We get up there. He, as we're going up there, he tried to charge me another $600. I told him I'm not paying. I already paid through Airbnb. Then he lowered it to $150. I told him I'm not paying that either. I told him I'm not paying a single penny more than I already paid. When we get up to the Airbnb, there's like five other people inside the Airbnb. And then another person walks in out of nowhere like Kramer from Seinfeld. So at that point, I got irritated and I just left because I could see it was a setup or either they lived there and... Uh, he forgot about it and so they all were there i called airbnb they canceled the reservation gave me a refund and i got this airbnb here now as soon as i got to this airbnb i just showed you as soon as i got in there the apartment was flooded because the neighbor next door left their water running and so there was water all in this apartment and i had to get them to mop it all up all right next up is agadir beach and promenade I really enjoyed this area and spent a ton of time in this area just walking around and just taking it all in. This area is actually about a five minute walk from my Airbnb. Like I said, I stayed in the marina area. To the left of my Airbnb would be like the port area where the cruise ships and, uh, you know, cargo ships, things of that nature come in. But then to the right is where the promenade and the beach is. So like I was here every day just walking around enjoying it. There's so much and so many things to do here. Uh, there is water activities to do. There are an endless onslaught of restaurants and uh, places to eat. Um, it was really hard sometimes deciding where I wanted to eat because there were so many options. And there's a ton of options. It's not just like Moroccan type food. I mean, it's American type food. You can get hoagies, paninis, seafood. There's like a little bit of everything. And of course, your regular like tangines and things like that. A little bit about Agadir, they have about 340 days of sunshine. And it's also the largest seaside resort in Morocco. Now here, this is a little later. This is actually on a weekday, not even a weekend. I'll show you how this uh, promenade area on the beach be on and popping at this time of night. Um, I think this was this was about, I'd say about almost one in the morning. And you can see how many people were out as if like, you know, it's just a regular American city. All right, guys, I'm going to record a quick video real quick. Uh, I just went to the sushi spot that's around the corner from where I'm staying at. Um, 
I've been seeing it for the last couple of days. I went online to see like what the prices were because it looks a little fancy and bougie. But um, this was about 20 bucks, 200 dirhams, um, which is pretty much 20 bucks. And you can see the presentation is incredible. Um, you get like the little box, Kyoto sushi, and then you get like the soy sauce, the ginger, and the, uh, um, damn, I can't even think of what the now green stuff is now. That's a shame. So, um, I forget. So anyway, uh, we can open up the box now to see. And then as you can see, I mean, this just looks great. I cannot wait to eat this. Uh, so this was the crunchy roll box. Uh, they got all different types. And, you know, the more you pay, the more you get. But you get like 24 different uh, sushis uh, for just 20 bucks. Next up is the food tour. It took about two, two and a half hours. We visited maybe 10 places. Here I had had the bean soup, the egg, and the apricot. The guy that was sitting across from me, he had apricot as well. They had a worm in it. And that was deeply concerning for me because up until this point, I had a fair share of apricots in Morocco. And I wonder if I ate a worm or two while I was there as well. Next up here, we're getting a sandwich. And as you can see, the cats are in there as if they're waiting in line to be served. One thing about taking these foreign trips is that they allow cats anywhere and everywhere so they may come up into a shop or they may jump into a chair next to you while you're in a restaurant outside. Now this next part here was me once again overcoming fears when I go on a trip and you'll see why in a minute. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm about to eat some snails for the first time. Pray for me. They're a little cool. Oh, it's still going. As long as that's blinking, it's still going. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> and then you remove this part, like the intestine and the, the last one, like this. And then you eat it like this. Do I dip You're next. I have my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do you like that? That's cool. Is that all of it? Yeah. Yeah. So, how is it? That wasn't that bad. Start. Good. <laughs> Is it like a napkin or something? It wasn't that bad. Yeah, you can have it. Here, I'm just walking back to my Airbnb. I had decided that night that I wanted to get a haircut. And so I Googled barbershops. And there was a barbershop about two and a half miles away. So I just walked to it, I had to walk through the beach and a promenade, and then up a hill, and then there was this neighborhood that I'm here at now. Continued to walk, and eventually I came to the barber shop. Um, the barber, I think the haircut only cost about $7, and that was to do my head and my beard and everything, which was amazing and incredible to me because, you know, back in the States, we just don't get it that cheap and easy. Another thing about Morocco is I actually got my haircut at about 10 p.m. at night, and you know, going back to the States, that a lot of her places close at five, six, seven, things like that. So to be able to actually get a haircut in Africa at almost 10 p.m. was amazing. As you can see, some of the sites in the neighborhood, like I said, it's just like a modern built up city and I just loved every minute of it. Welcome to Krakow Park. 
When entering the park, visitors are greeted by a huge crocodile mouth where they can take souvenir pictures with their family members and friends. They then enter a jungle-like setting before arriving at the botanical garden where the crocodiles reside. Now this trip is about maybe I'd say about 10 miles, a 10 mile trip from outside of central Agadir. Um, I actually caught a taxi. Um, I was pretty upset because I looked at some things online and you could take like a bus or a van out here and it would have been a lot cheaper. Uh, they ended up charging me $40 to come out here, $20 to get here. Then the taxi waited for me during my whole trip while I was inside of the park and then he drove me back to the city. So I gave him $20 up front day at the park and then I gave him $20 when I went to leave. He was making a bunch of phone calls asking people how much it should be. I really do feel as if I got played on that price point but you know I wanted to go to this park so bad so I'm not going to say I didn't mind but I just accepted whatever. <laughs> but again I wasn't too happy about it. The park invites visitors to discover a very aggressive species of crocodile that went extinct in Morocco in the 20th century. Croc Park is a crocodile zoological park in the town of Draga on the outskirts of Agadir, Morocco. It is the home to 325 crocodiles, as well as giant tortoises, green iguanas, giant pythons, anacondas, and marmosets. There are also a number of botanical gardens displaying rare and endangered species of plants. The park was designed to host crocodiles in a comfortable setting putting together several important elements, such as waterfalls and cascades, as well as to help boost tourism in Agadir and southern Morocco as a whole. The project, which is the first of its kind in the Masa region and in the Morocco at large, is said to cost private investors an estimated 25 dirhams, or 2.7 million in US dollars. The park employs up to 50 people in various areas of work, such as zookeeping, zoology, veterinarian medicine, food service, and hospitality. Spreading over four hectares, the park was designed by Luc, a French crocodile specialist who is known for creating many animal parks around the world. As a member of the Crocodile Specialist Group of the Species Survival Commission, the park designer's primary goal was to preserve crocodilian species, putting education and science at the center of all of its animal parks. The idea was to bring the expertise of Luke to the city of birth by making a beautiful park for the region. Luke has always been fascinated by reptiles and especially crocodiles. The resident species of Croc Park is the Nile crocodile, sometimes reaching up to 7 meters in length and weighing up to 1,000 pounds. It is also referenced as being potentially man-eating. The park is, however, designed to offer its visitors a safe environment with barriers and guardrails placed throughout the whole path. The young crocodiles, born in the rearing center, are brought in from Tunisia, where the climate is very similar to that of Agadir. The aggressive reptile species were present in Morocco in the 1970s, but has since gradually disappeared due to hunting and drought. But thanks to Luke, the species returned to the country in 2015, the year Croc Park was created. Some remarkable plant species include the Victoria, the largest water lily in the world, the Nabropryas, tree ferns, an ancient species that had existed since the time of dinosaurs, cyads, dioons, and much more. Visitors are now able to experience the natural environment after dark. Later in the day, the park creates a special setting with colorful lights, and the staff offer light toys to children so they look for the crocodiles whose eyes glow in the dark. A laboratory with a nursery for hatching and baby crocodiles development is set up in a cave, allowing visitors to observe the evolution of their lives. Female crocodiles lay 7 to 60 eggs in the sand, and the birth takes place three months later. The young crocodile emerges from the egg with a length of 20 to 30 centimeters. It then grows about 30 centimeters per year in length for the first three or four years of its life which is about 5 to 60 years in captivity. Look at this dude just chilling with the water going in his mouth. <laughs> He's just too cool.
Overall, I really enjoyed this outing at Crackle Park, and it was by far one of my highlights at Agadir. Um, it did take a minute to get there, and it was a little bit costly, but I think it was definitely worth it. I was a bit disappointed because it did mention that there were some snakes and things there, but I never came across any of the snakes. Or maybe, I don't know, <laughs> maybe the alligators joined up in a gang and ate all of them. But anyway, if you go to Agadir, I would seriously suggest that you come here to Croco Park. Next up is an Airbnb experience that I took with Yunus. It's basically a tour of Agadir. They picked me up from Airbnb and we went to a couple places such as the beach. We went to a souk, which is like a market. And we also went to the old Kasbah at the top of the mountain. It was a very great tour. Uh, I had a really good time. He's a really great personality. He was very nice. He even took me to the airport when I was going to leave Agadir the next day. <laughs> Yeah, I had um, a similar tour booked for him yesterday, mm -hmm. but the lady, she just never responded back or showed up or anything, so I had to cancel and get refunded, and that's why I reached out to you, Oh, okay. she didn't show up. You wanted to do what? Do um, it was similar to what you're doing, oh, okay. but um, with no car. No, she had the car. Uh, I think it included uh, lunch. But ah, there's a car, a vintage one. No, no, no. Just, I mean, she did like a city tour. Ah, okay. But, yeah, she never got back to me, so. <laughs> so it was the last, uh, so yeah, the last but, choice. I've seen yours. The only reason I took hers is because uh, she, she had lunch ah, okay. with it. So I was like, okay, that's some food, so. <laughs> ah, maybe they would ask lunch, too. <laughs> <laughs> is lunch included or is the client who had to pay the lunch? I'm pretty sure it's probably included in the price, but I mean, I think hers is like $29, I think, for the tour. $29? And I, yeah, and it included like some tangerine at a restaurant or something. Yeah, because that's the only reason I chose hers, because like I said, I was looking at yours first, and then I was like, wait, she has food. <laughs> no, so. you can, every, with me, you can ask for food, and you can go for it. Okay. Well, it's a good idea, we'll add it. <laughs> or add a, uh, food, a lunch, or breakfast. You know, everybody likes food, so... Or a cafe or something. <laughs> everybody likes food, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Souk El Head has around 6,000 merchant stalls. It's surprisingly easy to navigate when compared to many of the sprawling souks around Morocco, however. Twelve gates lead into the souk, and clear numbering makes it easy to arrange a meeting point and get your bearings. The crowds and chaos can, however, make some people feel overwhelmed. If that's the case, just walk in one direction until you come to an outer gate. You can then walk around to the outer walls to get to where you want to be, or catch a taxi if you don't want to walk. The stalls are grouped in fairly well-organized manner, meaning that if you can't head straight to a particular gate, if there are certain items you're interested in buying. Vendors sell an assortment of traditional Moroccan items such as clothing, footwear, pottery, rugs, crabs, and musical instruments, as well as fresh fruits, vegetables, spices, and everyday household goods. You'll find almost anything you can think of here, from food and toiletries to home furnishings, electronics, jewelry, and handcrafts. Is the ticket to go to you as expected? Yeah. How much? Um, ticket was six hundred altogether. Six hundred dollars. Okay. 
Oh yeah, it could be a way more. I always try to find like a decent price. Next up is Daniel Land. Now this is just the beginning stages of this. Uh, the cable core just recently opened and it goes from this area all the way up to the top of the mountain where the Casbah is and the old souk used to be. But eventually this area is going to be like a water park and when it's completed there's going to be 16 swimming pools, 14 water slides. There will also be two restaurants that are inside of two planes and there will also be a boat with restaurants on three floors. They say when finished, the view will be panoramic and unparalleled. I have the privilege to know just the two of us. It's like the AP. I know, right? I heard about that. You gotta pay like more to get some orange juice or something. Are you going? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So about your videos, don't talk, just film. Um, I do, a lot of times I'll do it like after the fact, like when I'm with the microphone, when I'm at home ah, and stuff. okay, and you start to like podcasts. Yeah, I really don't like doing it in front of a whole bunch of people, but um... Yes, and you'll uh, say something about academia. Right, I like look at information and uh, like Wikipedia or other places and find information about stuff, and then I like explain a little bit about you know, okay, like the air, like, of course, like the earthquake and things of that nature. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I hate doing oh. it sometimes because some people like look at you like you're a lunatic or crazy. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh huh. Are we allowed to stand in this thing here? This is nice. Is this your first time on here? Sorry? This your first time? No, the second time second actually. Time. I went I okay. went uh, back in the night. Yeah, this is cool. It's really good. So you said this opened up like last June or July? Yes, exactly. In the it hasn't even been a year yet. Cool. Yes. No, I didn't know that there is a space like this. This um, man, the other day I came up here, he showed me how to get up here. Even though I could have used my Google Maps to let him show yeah. me. And he tried to charge me 200 dirhams. 200 dirhams. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> he said, 100. I was like, no, I was like, so I give him like $4. Four, I mean, 40 dirhams. But mm -hmm. I know it would have been cheaper with a taxi, but. Yeah. I know a lot of times people are just trying to make a couple bucks and stuff. You know, sometimes yeah. it can be hard. So, you know, I try to help when I can. Yeah, yes, of course. Sometimes it does get a little tiring because it's like everybody. Yeah, all the time yeah, yeah. The day. Let's go, yeah. It's too much. Wow, it's fantastic. I did it in the night and in the night it was different. You have the lights everywhere in the city. Mm -hmm. But now it's clear. You can see the beach and the mountains. Cable car. I will take uh, my parents to do this too. They would like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's And the price is it expensive? It was, I think, what, three hundred and twenty dollars for four nights. It's about like eighty dollars a night. Okay, eighty dollars. Yeah. Okay. It's not that expensive. No, it's not really considering an area. Yeah, exactly. It's so, marina. I just wanted to be like near the beach. Yeah. This is so cool. I don't like 
like that part. <laughs> don't like the part? No, when it hits uh, that. Oh, okay. It yeah, yeah. That. How long does it take to uh, walk up here? To walk? It's mm -hmm. about 45 minutes. Oh, that's it? Yeah. So you just walk along these pathways? Yeah. Okay. There's this place for walking, you see? Okay. Uh, there's uh, one for driving and the other place for walking. Yes, my family. I still live with them. Okay. Yes, but I have the privilege when I am in Mirla to live around to have the independence. Because the apartment where it is no client, I'm just saying in the apartment. Okay. And I have a, a small one as well. Okay, and after that, the, the Sadi, the dynasty of Sadi, in Morocco, with the help of Berber of this place in Agadir, mm -hmm. they drive over out to the Portuguese after 40 years. And this was just all up here? Sorry? This was just in a city period or just up yes, here? Yes, in this place. Okay. And, uh, some, some information about it. In the center of Agadir, you'll find one of the most historical places of Agadir, Agadir Ophela, and its impressive view, the Bay of Agadir. Built in 1540, the fortress overlooks the city of Agadir and was intended to protect itself from attacks from Portuguese settlers. The earthquakes in 1960, however, destroyed the citadel, leaving behind ruins. The ramparts have been rehabilitated and the interior of the fortress is now the subject of major restoration work. Now back at that earthquake in 1960, it was a magnitude 5.7 and lasted about 15 seconds. It completely destroyed the city and it also killed more than a third of its inhabitants. So you can imagine back then there was only about 40,000 people who lived in Agadir but the earthquake killed 15,000 of them. How many people died and how they had to like... Yes. Um, how they had to bury all of them and there's so many bodies Hello. and stuff. And yeah. Had to, oh, no, okay. Uh, I, I did one the other day. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, wow. Cinema, you know, administration, etc. <coughs> and the old Medina here. But uh, as I told you, after the earthquake, everything was gone. So, is there anybody still in there? No, no, <coughs> nobody in there. Everybody, everything is destroyed. Are they ever planning to like okay. okay, and they renovate it. Are they ever planning to like restore it at some point? Sorry? Are they ever planning to like redo it? Yes, yes, they okay. started to do that. Are they did? Okay. Yes, they already started to do all this is new. All of a sudden, you can see the past is like this. There's nothing here. Just the wall. It's explosive there, and then. Hmm? It's expensive. Then everything's so hectic, like. Oh, okay, in Boston. 
And where's Dude. the cheapest place in the US? You can read the cheapest place. Mm. The north or the south. I'm not sure. Like, everything's getting more expensive. <laughs> uh, the US is starting to hit on some hard times. So. <clears throat> so I'm not sure. Now, to get to the top of the Kasba, you can take the cable car that we just took, take a taxi, or even walk to the top. The restoration of the Agadir of Fela Kasba will be an important event for all Moroccans, especially Agadiris. It is an event that will restore not just the culture and heritage of the ancient site, but also rekindle the city's recognition of this piece of its history. With the restoration of the Agadir of Fela, the city will not only share in its history with locals and visitors alike, but also properly honor and remember those who lost their lives in the tragic earthquake of 1960. And they say he's a, a religious man, a good man. So people they come there. It's a, like superstition thing. Come there and they ask him to, to help them with God. And ask God to give us money, ask God to give us help, etc. Et so was this walkway and stuff here way back in the day or is this more modern? I know I'm no, sure the road wasn't, wasn't but I mean as far as okay. no, just like this. I like some of the little smaller airports. Smaller? Yeah. It's it's big. Big. Oh, it is? No, not really. Versus the huge ones, like New York. New York, of course. It's New York. <laughs> New York is huge. The airport is crazy. Alright guys, so this is some bonus content that I took. Um, I wasn't even going to show this because I was so disgusted with this part of my trip that I wasn't even going to make an episode for it. But one of the friends of the channel uh, told me to post it anyway, so I'm just going to add this as bonus content at the end of this episode. Uh, this is my bonus footage on my trip to Zurich, Switzerland. I spent a day and a half here. Um, I was so disgusted with Switzerland that I didn't even capture enough content. I was just ready to go. Uh, basically, 
Just had a bad experience that people were rude, uh, they were snooty as if they were better than other people. I just had a really, really bad overall experience. And I'm not saying that I would never go to Switzerland again. Um, I would love to go to Switzerland because obviously Switzerland has a ton of scenery, a ton of beauty. And this is not a knock against all of the Switzerland people because I know that there are some great, beautiful people. However, my trip there, it, it was horrible, and it wasn't so much Switzerland in and of itself, it was the people that I encountered while I was there. In addition, uh, prices there are extremely expensive, like I got a, I got what, a cheeseburger, some fries, and a drink at McDonald's, and it came to like $17, American dollars. Um, prices are just absolutely ridiculous there. Um, that was another part. I ended up just going to the grocery store and buying food that way because I wasn't about to break the bank paying these inflated ridiculous prices that are in Switzerland. So having said that, yes, I definitely would go back to Switzerland under different circumstances. I would just have to be mentally and psychologically prepared, one, for the prices and two, for the people. Again, I know that this is not everyone in Switzerland, but I can only go off of the experience that I had. And so here's the little content and I just want to get this out of sight and out of mind. Until the next time, until the next episode, peace.